All right, so you're looking for a 3D modeling laptop. And in this video, I'm gonna cover from the budget category all the way up to the high-end 3D modeling laptops. Some of these laptops are gonna have like gaming GPUs all the way up to the more high-end workstation GPUs that are certified to run programs like SolidWorks or Revit. Okay, so that's what you're gonna expect in this video. Now, if I'm talking too fast at any point, you can go ahead and grab the little cog icon and slow me down. But if I'm talking too slow for you, go ahead and speed me up. I've had mixed reports if I talk too fast or if I talk too slow. Now, during the middle of the video, you're going to see benchmarks in 3D modeling programs and see the scores related for 80% of the laptops that you see here. I've had my hands on reviews of 80% of the laptops that will be in my lineups for this year. Now, also, I'm gonna explain some of the specs. So if you don't see the exact model that you're looking for on my recommendation, you can understand what laptop you should be looking for according to the specs that you're gonna hear me talk about in this video. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of these laptops as we're going through the video, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's get right into the video talking about the budget category. And keep in mind, by budget, I don't mean super cheap, I just mean on the lower end of a budget. Okay, so if you want to get into 3D modeling, you're gonna need a dedicated GPU. And so the first lineup you're gonna see is the HP Victus, the Dell Gaming G15, the Lenovo Legion 5, the Acer Swift X, and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. All of these have dedicated GPUs, they're more on the lower end of the price scale, and they're equipped for some low to mid-range 3D modeling. The reason I say low to mid-range is because they all have about four gigs of VRAM inside of the graphics processing unit. And that four gigs of VRAM can only do so much as to give you smooth and effective 3D modeling. Now we're gonna get into these specs later in the video, but for now that kind of gives you a start. Some of the other GPUs that you'll see later in the video have anywhere from six to eight gigs of VRAM, which gives them more power inside of a 3D modeling program. Now these are not workstation GPUs, so they will not be technically certified for something like SolidWorks or Autodesk Revit, but they will still get the job done. You'll see that later in the benchmark charts. All right, moving on, we're gonna take a look at more of the full-on mid-range budget category. It's gonna be something like the HP Omen, the Asus Zephyrus G14, or G15, the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix G15, the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim, and the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Now keep in mind, you see a lot of AMD CPUs here because these tend to be slightly more affordable than their Intel counterparts. Now keep in mind, one of the most popular and powerful laptops for 3D modeling that is not a dedicated workstation GPU is gonna be the Legion 5 Pro. This laptop really packs a punch for 3D modeling. It shows off fantastic in the benchmarks, which you'll see coming up in just a bit. But one of my personal favorites is gonna be the G14 and G15, as well as the Legion 7 Slim. So if you're looking for something a little more portable, a little more on the go friendly, the Zephyrus G14 and G15, as well as the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim would be my top picks. If you'd care about raw performance, the Legion 5 Pro is gonna be the top pick from this list. Now moving up the line, we're moving into the mid to high end range category. The price is shifting up a little bit here. We're looking at the Acer Predator Helios 300, the Gigabyte Arrow 15 OLED, the Razer Blade 15 base and advanced model, as well as the MSI Creator 15 and the MSI Creator Z16, and then the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo, which is one of the more like fancy laptops in this lineup. It's got a dual screen setup, great for the different options. Maybe you have you know, your main project taking place on the top screen, then you have that bottom 14 inch screen for maybe some more of your uh, effects or quick access to your panels, and it just really helps expedite your workflow. Now, if I was gonna say the best bang for buck out of this list, I would say the Gigabyte Aero 15. It's got great pricing and solid components. Now this next page is featuring all of the latest MacBook Pro, M1 Pro, and M1 Max models. I have not done extensive testing for 3D modeling, but I know a lot of people are recommending these for 3D modeling, and you might be upset if I did not include them in the list. So here they are. Know that I have not done extensive testing, but according to the specs, they will be suitable. So you'll have to be running through a Windows parallel or you know the emulation where you load Windows into bootcamp and then you'll run the programs. And so to me, this is not an optimized workflow. You're running a system, Apple, Mac OS, in a way that it really wasn't intended to be run. Now they do have some native 3D modeling apps for Mac computers and I would consider looking into those. 
But as far as my personal experience goes, I have not had a ton of experience running Apple products in 3D modeling apps, but I know some people highly recommend it. So I don't wanna leave those out as a viable option. Next up on the list is going to be the high-end workstations. Now these are the ones with workstation, either GPUs and CPUs or workstation GPUs. First up is the Lenovo ThinkPad P17. We have the i7-11800H and RTX A2000. Now we're seeing really, really good benchmarks coming out of these A2000 series. For instance, the ZBook has an A2000 and it scored very well in the charts coming up here in just a minute. I'm excited for you guys to check those out. From there, we have the Dell Precision 5000 5760, the MSI WE76, the HP Fury, as well as the HP StudioBook. Next, we have the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16 OLED. Now, one of the great standout features of this laptop is the wheel. So I've really enjoyed using this laptop with the wheel, especially for me personally, I do a lot of video editing. This allows you to load a lot of custom features into the wheel and you can add shortcuts, quickly scroll through, make your brushes bigger or smaller or whatever tools you're using while 3D modeling. So the ProArt Studio Book packs a punch, very powerful, and it's got really cool features like the wheel or excuse me, the dial, they call it the dial. The dial that really helps out with your productivity. Not a gimmick, really a game changer. I've really found a lot of value in using that in my workflow. Now moving forward, we're gonna look at the actual benchmarks. We're gonna take a look at Autodesk 3DS Max. And as you can see, the Asus ProArt StudioBook is one of the top performing laptops in this lineup, followed closely by the HP ZBook Fury. And then you see the G15 is actually right behind the Fury. So this is not a workstation GPU, but it performs very well in 3D modeling followed up shortly by the Legion 5 Pro, another fantastic laptop for 3D modeling, although not a workstation GPU. Okay, we're gonna move down the line to Autodesk Maya here. As you can see in Autodesk Maya, the Legion 5 Pro actually takes the lead in Autodesk Maya, which to me has been pretty shocking. You have these laptops with dedicated workstation GPUs and a gaming laptop is still outperforming them in the benchmark tests. Now it's followed up shortly by the Fury and then the Studio Book. Um, so these are obviously great performing laptops for Autodesk Maya, but it's kind of shocking to see a gaming laptop outperforming them. Now moving forward into PTC Creo, we take a sharp turn towards the workstation GPUs. As PTC Creo is far more optimized for these dedicated workstation GPUs, whether it's a Quadro or it's an A2000 or A5000, and you can see they're really performing well. Studio G8, but only about 50 points behind, we again have the Legion 5 Pro. So it really is splitting hairs on what you need. Now the biggest difference we see is in SolidWorks, and SolidWorks really appreciates workstation GPUs. And it's actually in their terms of service that if you want to get customer support or support from their team, you actually have to be using a workstation GPU. More details on that, you can research that and find out in depth of what that means and how much service you can get, so on and so forth. But in a general rule, they want you to be using a workstation GPU. And as you can see, the ZBook Studio G8, the ProArt Studio Book from Asus, and the ZBook Power G7 are all really battling it out for that first place position. So the workstation GPUs matter a lot in something like SolidWorks and Revit, like I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, moving forward into the spec conversation, as you've noticed, in Autodesk 3ds Max and Autodesk Maya, really, as long as you have a high performing laptop, you can really get away with a solid gaming laptop for your 3D modeling needs. It's really only when you move into those workstation obsessed programs that the workstation GPU is like a Quadro GPU or an A2000, 3000 or 5000 really makes a difference. Okay, so the GPU is probably one of the biggest determining factors of the performance inside of the program. The processor is really good. You want a processor with really solid single core performance. There's not a lot of 3D modeling apps that are really optimized for multi-core performance, although they're continuing to work on it often. So anywhere from six to eight cores is really solid. 10 cores is great as well if you're gonna get in um, to Ryzen processors, the 10 to 16 cores. But really you're fine with about six to eight cores because you want that strong single core performance. So as far as CPU is concerned, having a Xeon processor, you know, could be good, it's more of a workstation processor as far as Intel is concerned, but really an Intel core processor will do very well too. Now, next thing that people wonder about is RAM. How much RAM do you need? Because often you'll see 3D modeling laptops with workstation components like a Xeon processor and a Quadro GPU, for instance, coming with at least 32 gigs of RAM, sometimes out of the factory with 64. 
3D modeling programs do like to eat up quite a bit of RAM. They're very robust programs, so they are munching on RAM quite a lot. Now, if you're new to the whole conversation of RAM, basically anytime you open a program, it pulls away a certain amount of RAM uh, from your computer's use. And so if you open Google Chrome, you might use anywhere from two to five gigs of RAM. If you open up Spotify, it might use one gig of RAM. Then you open a 3D modeling program, it might use 15 to 25 gigs of RAM, just depending on what you're doing. And so the more RAM you have, the less bottleneck you create as the more multitasking you are working through. So more RAM is, is really always better, but I would say as a good benchmark, get 32 gigs of RAM if your budget allows and you shouldn't have any issues. And if you need to upgrade later, you can always make that happen. Now, as far as storage is concerned, I would recommend having a solid state drive. Most laptops are coming equipped with them these days. It's not a huge discussion really anymore, but if you do see a option to get a HDD or an SSD, I'd go the SSD route as it will have faster read and write speeds for your projects that you're working on. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, links are in the description below. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.